160. He's gone. What's up, everybody? Today we're doing kind of a follow-up video uh, to my little Cut 50D plasma cutter here. So I was working on some stuff last week, and all of a sudden it just died. Turned out, um, I guess I threw it away already, but it turned out it has this power switch right here that turns it on and off. Uh, and this green wire is the main AC wire that comes in actually from the wall. So if you follow this down, this actually runs all the way back out here and comes out to the power plug. Which means that all the current that goes into this machine runs through this tiny little switch. Now, this switch, if you look at the side of it, is rated for uh, 16 amps at 250 volts. Uh, which is what this thing runs on. It runs on a 240. But uh, that means that <laughs> Even though this is a supposedly 50 amp plasma cutter, in reality, it's pushing all 50 amps through a tiny little switch, which means that this is why, even though this is a 50 amp plasma cutter, it really struggles with anything over an eighth of an inch. So today, we're gonna do some science. And now, my $200 plasma cutter is awesome. Uh, it's not a Hypertherm 45, which costs 10 times what it does and will cut through you know, three quarter inch plate like butter. Um, I would love to have one of those, but uh, it's a lot of money to commit to something that I don't use all that much. But it would be nice for this thing to be able to handle quarter inch plate like what we need for the golf cart. And so we're gonna do a little bit of a, uh, an experiment today. So this is a brand new replacement switch that's in here. Um, and the unit works, I've already tested it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to make a cut uh, with the switch in place and then I'm going to basically just jumper the wires with a piece of wire that's the same diameter uh, as the wires that are in the machine meaning that the switch is no longer the current limiting uh, item and then we're going to try to make another cut in the same material and see if there's any difference so I got to get some stuff hooked up here real quick and we're going to just do a quick little cut test uh, unfortunately I don't have any way of measuring the current I know it's noobish I don't have a toroid and I don't have a, uh, a, a clampy style current meter. I'm sorry, I know, don't yell at me. But we're gonna just do the cut test and see how well it cuts. If there's any difference, if there is, then we can make modifications to our unit to make it better. Uh, if it doesn't, then we can kind of follow the path and figure out where the uh, current limit is happening. So let me get some stuff set up and let's get to chopping. So this is quarter inch steel, uh, got the ground clamp hooked up, all running through our switch, full air compressor. Let's see how she does. So as you can see, there's a lot of dross right here. And what that means is that we're not actually cutting all the way through. And so as you can see, I mean, I can't even bend this, uh, like flex it off. It's barely cut maybe half the way through, which is really shitty. And a 50 amp plasma cutter should be able to go through a quarter inch plate like butter. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to uh, jumper the switch and see if she does any better. All right, so as you can see here, all we did was we uh, jumpered the two wires that the switch used to contain. This is kind of heavy gauge wire. And so we're gonna see if it made any difference. So I mean, just take a look at that. So yeah, I mean, if you take a look at that right there, this is the cut we made right here is uh, with the standard switch in place. And then that right there is the cut I made with the jumpers. And you can see it actually cut through quarter inch steel pretty much as well as you'd expect. Now, yeah, there's still quite a bit of dross over here compared to something like a hypertherm. But to be honest with you, I mean, that's got a better tip, better cutting technology, uh, you know, all kinds of good stuff in it. But I would say that now I actually have a plasma cutter that will plasma cut things, you know, like it's like a 50 amp plasma cutter. And so that's super exciting. 
Uh, could I put a switch in it that would handle the current? Absolutely, yes I could. You can find switches that will handle hundreds of amps if you need them to. To be honest with you, I just use the fucking plug, man. And at any point in time, I can pull one of these wires out real quick. And it's not really uh, too, too much of a safety issue. I mean, if you just grab one of these and, and uh, pop it out. If you grab one of those and pop it out, there's a really good chance you're going to shock the fuck all out of yourself. So maybe it is a safety issue. Uh, maybe I definitely should put a switch on it. And maybe I will put a switch on it. <laughs> But to be honest with you, the best thing to do is just to unplug uh, the machine from the wall when you're done using it. Because a lot of times I'm just moving. I only have one of these. So I'll be plasma cutting, then I'll swap, plug it over to the welder. Um, but yeah, you should definitely not do what I just did. That was a stupid fucking idea. Um, but glad to see it worked out. Um, so definitely if you're going to buy one of these, be prepared to make this modification. Because unless you're cutting just sheet metal, uh, you're going to want the extra power. That's all I got for you guys. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Uh, check me out. Facebook, MaxWorks. Instagram, MaxWorks. Snapchat, MaxWorks. Shoot me a link. Ask me some questions. Uh, check out all the latest project videos. Hit the like button. I love you guys. Peace.